So before I start this video, I just want to say, yes, it's been a while since my last return video, and I know it's been just about another month and a half since I've made a video. Things are a little busy right now. I will go into that in later detail. Second of all, if you hear background noise, just accept it. I'm filming outside. I have great lighting today, and it's way too beautiful to be filming in the studio. Lots of people yelling outside. It's just a thing that's going to be happening in the future from time to time. Get used to it. If there's one thing besides electricity that most of us take for granted, it would be wireless connections for our mobile devices, specifically cellular connections. It's one of the easiest things in the world to forget about because it's around us all the time. And it seems like every couple of years or so, we start seeing more and more about the improvements on this technology. Back in 2008, it was all about 3G. Then we moved on to 4G. And then on top of 4G, we got LTE. Well, now the latest buzz for the last year has been 5G. But what is it? What will it do? And when can you expect to start using it before the next big wireless change happens? All of this information can be a bit overwhelming, so it's time for an explanation. A simplified explanation. 5G is, on the most basic level imaginable, just the next generation of cellular wireless. It's something that everyone has seen coming forever. Even a Best Buy commercial from the Super Bowl back in 2011 saw this coming. Oliver, the 5G train! How many bloody Gs are there? And you know we're in a weird place when Ozzy Osbourne is making technology predictions. From the viewpoint of someone who uses a cell phone, which you might be, 5G will allow faster data speeds and will grant you faster downloads of web pages, apps, and your favorite movies and TV shows. How much faster will this network go, you may ask? Compared to the 4G LTE standard, which is the best you can get without going to Wi-Fi, 5G is promising theoretical top download speeds of up to 20 gigabits per second, up to 50 times faster than the current standard can provide. Next time you're at home, try testing your cable internet and seeing if you can approach speeds like that. Even Google Fiber, which was promising speeds that hardly any other ISP could even compete with, was only topping out at around one gigabit per second. With speeds like that, you will be able to not only download some serious 4K, and possibly soon 8K, right to your phone or laptop, but you will also be able to handle things like VR and AR while on the go. However, you have to understand that these kinds of speeds are based on a variety of factors and will hardly, if ever, reach the maximum data speed. But even if you were only to get one-tenth or even one one-hundredth of that theoretical speed, that would still be able to put your home internet to shame. And for people like me who will be living in the city and won't be able to get cable companies to dig up a line to their studio apartment, cellular companies will now be able to compete with traditional ISPs. Well, sort of compete. AT&T and Time Warner, I'm looking at you. The second part of what 5G brings to the wireless table is the ability to handle a greater number of devices at once, or the throughput. This is an important feature considering the world we are going to be living in from this moment on. Not only because tens of thousands of people at concerts and baseball games are streaming to Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, and YouTube all at the same time, but it's also because soon, every device in your home, including your toaster, will have a wireless connection. Before, back in the days of 3G and early 4G, the only wireless device you had on you was your phone and maybe a cellular-capable laptop or netbook. Now we have smartwatches, fitness trackers, iPads, drones, and soon, even our cars. Which brings me to the last feature that 5G brings along, and that is a far lower latency. Latency is how fast data actually gets to your device. It's like when you're video chatting someone in the next room and you notice that there is a slight delay in the video on your screen and when they are actually saying something. It gets annoying in a situation like that, but it can be a matter of life and death when someone is in a self-driving car and a self-driving car has to make decisions on data it receives over cellular connections. And for those of you who thought I would make a video like this and not talk about self-driving cars, you were wrong. 
To me, self-driving cars are probably the biggest thing to benefit from the promises of 5G wireless because relying on sensors isn't enough to ensure the safety of self-driving cars. When you have millions of cars on the road talking to each other over wireless and sharing data at gigabit speeds with almost no delay, 5G is a technology that can make that happen and bring forward a future of wireless products that wouldn't even be possible today. So when can we expect this? And is the phone you're looking at the holidays going to have it? Unfortunately, it's going to be a while before we get to see the full glory of 5G infrastructure. The plan as of this point is to have the system begin rolling out to the masses by 2020, but even that is a stretch considering there are going to be a lot of requirements this network needs to meet before it gets to the point that 4G is at today. AT&T is still rolling out 5G in a select number of test cities, and even still, their phones aren't widely available on the market today that can take advantage of these networks. It's basically the opposite of when there were a ton of 4K TVs on the market, but hardly anyone was producing 4K content. Soon enough, one half of the technology will catch up with the other. But until then, we are stuck listening to how the future is only a few short years away. I just hope in that amount of time, we don't see the beginnings of the next generation of wireless. It's Bieber 6G Fever.